My Magical Story Collection, Beauty and the Beast, read by Books for Kids by Flying Dragons. Once upon a time, a young prince lived in a giant castle. One cold night, an old beggar arrived and offered him a rose in return for shelter. He sneered at her gift and turned her away. Suddenly, she transformed into a beautiful enchantress. Then she turned the prince into a hideous beast. The enchantress also changed the castle servants into enchanted objects. Then she left behind a magic mirror and the rose. For the spell to be broken, the prince would have to fall in love and earn that person's love in return before the rose's last petal fell. In a small village nearby lived a beautiful young woman named Belle. As she entered the town bookstore, the owner gave her a book as a gift. It's my favourite. Far off places, daring sword fights, magic spells, a prince in disguise. Oh, thank you very much, Belle rushed outside, reading as she walked. Soon, a hunter named Gaston walked up to her. He grabbed the book from her hands. It's about time you got your nose out of those books and paid attention to more important things like me he said rudely. Then Gaston's friend Le Fou began to insult Belle's father, Maurice, who was an inventor. He called him crazy. Belle was mad. My father's not crazy. He's a genius. When Belle got home, she told her father that the townspeople were making fun of them. Don't worry, Belle. My invention will change everything for us, Maurice said kindly. Maurice was hoping to sell his latest creation at the town fair. He hopped on his horse, Philippe, and headed into town. But Maurice got lost, and he and Philippe ended up in a dark, misty forest. All of a sudden, a pack of wolves surrounded them. Philippe reared and ran away. Terrified, Maurice raced through the forest, with the wolves right behind him. When he reached a tall gate, he opened it and dashed inside. Then he slammed it shut on the angry wolves. Belle's father looked up and saw a huge castle. He walked up to the front door and knocked. Hello, I've lost my horse and I need a place to stay for the night. Of course, monsieur, you're welcome here, said a voice. Maurice looked down to see a small clock and a candelabra staring up at him. Well, this is impossible. You're alive, he exclaimed. The candelabra, named Lumiere, led him inside. All of a sudden, a loud voice boomed. There's a stranger here. In the shadows lurked a large, hulking figure. It was the beast. Maurice pleaded with him. Please, I need a place to stay. But the beast ignored him and dragged him away. At home, Bird he Belle heard a knock on the door. Gaston, she said, unimpressed. Belle, there's not a girl in town who wouldn't love to be in your shoes. Do you know why? Because I want to marry you. Belle turned his proposal down. She did not like the conceited bully. Disappointed, Gaston left. A little while later, Belle went outside and found Philippe all alone. Philippe, what are you doing here? Where's Papa? she cried. The horse whinnied anxiously. Frightened, Belle quickly leapt onto Philippe, who led her to the mysterious forest. Soon they spotted a castle in the distance. Belle ran toward the castle and snuck inside. She wandered down a dark, deserted hallway. A few moments later, she found her father locked in a tower. Papa, we have to get you out of here, she, Belle exclaimed. Suddenly, she heard a loud voice call out from the shadows. What are you doing here? Belle gasped. Suddenly, standing in front of her was a giant beast. Please let my father go. Take me instead, she begged. You will take his place, the beast questioned. When Belle promised to stay with the beast forever, he released Maurice. Back in the village, Maurice ran into a tavern. There he spotted Gaston and his friends. Please, I need your help. 
A horrible beast has locked Bill in a dungeon. The crowd laughed, convinced that he was going crazy. But Maurice's wild story gave Gaston an idea. Inside the castle, the beast showed Belle to her room. You can go anywhere you like, except the West Wing. What's in the West Wing? Belle asked. It's forbidden, the beast yelled. Belle ran into her bedroom. I'll never escape from this prison or see my father again, she cried. Later that night, Belle was feeling a little better. Lumiere, the candelabra, led her into the dining room. The napkins, dishes and spoons danced as the serving pieces carried in tasty food. Belle was delighted. After dinner, Belle wandered into the forbidden west wing. There she found the enchanted rose, shimmering beneath a glass dome. She reached out to lift off the cover. But the beast had been secretly watching her. He was very angry. I warned you never to come here. Get out, he roared. Terrified, Belle fled the castle. Outside, Belle found Philippe. They galloped toward the village. All of a sudden, a pack of hungry wolves circled them. Just then, the beast appeared. He fought off the wolves. As they ran away, the beast collapsed in pain. Belle knew this was her chance to escape, but she couldn't leave him. Here, lean against Philippe. I'll help you back to the castle, she said as she helped the beast back up. When they returned, Belle tended to the beast's wounds and thanked him for saving her life. The beast smiled. To show how grateful he was, he gave her access to the beautiful castle library. Meanwhile, Gaston was plotting to put Belle's father in an insane asylum. The only way he wouldn't do it is, was if Belle agreed to marry him. Gaston was convinced that soon she would become his wife. As more time passed, Belle and the Beast became good friends. One day she watched as he tried to feed some tiny birds. She realised that he was kind and gentle despite his gruff appearance. One night, Belle and the Beast dressed up for a fancy dinner. The Beast even remembered his table manners. They both had a wonderful time. After dinner, Belle taught the Beast how to dance. They glided gracefully across the floor. The Beast had never been happier. He asked Belle if she too was happy. Yes, I only wish I could see my father. I miss him so much, she said sadly. There is a way, the beast replied. Moments later, the beast brought Belle the magic mirror. When she wished to see her father, Maurice appeared in the glass. He was lost in the woods. The beast saw the unhappy look on Belle's face. He decided to let her go, even if it meant that he would never be human again. He handed Belle the mirror. Take it with you, so you'll always have a way to look back and remember me. Soon Belle found her father, but moments later a group of men grabbed Maurice to take him away. Gaston put his arm around Belle. I can clear up this little misunderstanding if you marry me. I'll never marry you. My father's not crazy. I can prove it, Belle yelled. She showed Gaston the magic mirror. An image of the beast appeared in it. Gaston shouted, I say we kill the beast. Then he and the villagers headed toward the castle. When the townsfolk arrived, Gaston forced the beef on, beast onto the roof. As they fought, Gaston lost his balance and fell to the ground. The beast suddenly collapsed. Belle ran toward him. No, please, I love you, she cried. Seconds later, the beast sprung into the air. He was surrounded by a shimmering glow. Belle had told the beast that she loved him, which meant that the spell was broken. The beast transformed back into a handsome prince. Belle, it's me, the handsome prince said. It is you, Belle said joyfully. True love had broken the spell, and Belle and the beast lived happily ever after. If you enjoyed this book, please hit subscribe. We would love to share lots more Disney books, lots of other kinds of books with you too.